It's Tuesday today, or Monday, I guess, for some of you. And that means that it's time to learn about another insect with me as your host. This week is another listener request from Chantel out in Australia. And with that, let's get started with episode 42. Australia's spiny stick insect is scientifically known as Extatosoma tiaratum, which translates to ecstatic bodied tiara. Quite the dainty name for something that looks monstrous to many. This big stick insect is native to Queensland and New South Wales, which are both on the east coast of Australia. But because they happen to be easy to raise and docile, these insects have been shipped around the world and used in various museums and educational facilities. I'm not saying they can be found in the wild around the world, but escaped populations might exist in Australia's neighboring islands like New Guinea, for example. These insects go by many names, like Australian walking stick, spinies, Maclay's spectre, after the naturalist William Maclay who described them, spiny stick insects, and spiny leaf insects. Now you might be confused about why it goes by both leaf and stick insect, and I'm going to clear that up right now. Stick insects and leaf insects are terms for two different body shapes in the order Phasmatodia, and as such are also divided by their family name. Leaf insects in the family Phileidae are typically flat and look like leaves, while stick insects in the family Phasmatidae are usually more twig-like. Today's spiny stick is indeed a stick insect within the family Phasmatidae, but the females have a pretty ambiguous body shape that makes them look as if they could be a leaf insect too. And yeah, I'm specifically talking about the girls here because this insect is sexually dimorphic which means males and females are pretty different. The females for this species are longer and a bit more thick. They also have leaf-shaped arms and very small wings. The males, on the other hand, are thin with very long wings and their legs do not widen out to the same leafy extent. I think the females are actually the most commonly photographed as well, but I'll put pictures of both up on the socials. So as I mentioned earlier, these insects are very popular as both pets and exhibit insects for museums. And as such, there is a wealth of knowledge about how to raise them and what they eat. Wild populations are known to feed on eucalyptus, but they can also eat bramble like raspberry bushes, oak, and rose bushes as well. In fact, most domestic populations are raised on rose or berry bushes because eucalyptus isn't exactly easy to get outside of Australia. The life cycle for these insects begin as an egg, two millimeters in length, which is like the tip of a lightly used crayon. How do I know that? Because that's what Google Sensei told me. Anyway, here's where things get crazy. The eggs look like calico brown seeds, and not just to humans. Female spiny stick insects actually flick their eggs on the ground so that ants from the genus Leptomyrmex will take them home and keep them safe until they hatch. Now it gets even more wild because these eggs actually have a small plug called a capitulum that's edible for the ants with no consequence to the stick insect. This is mimicry to the extreme, to the point where the eggs even smell like ant food. I have no idea what that would be exactly, but what I do know is that the ants keep these eggs in their homes until they hatch, which is a long time by the way. We're talking six months of time, and sometimes up to two years. Wow. Now the time it takes is dependent on the conditions of the environment. For example, dry and unsuitable weather might cause the eggs to remain in this stage for longer, as opposed to warm and relatively humid weather. Upon hatching, these first instars actually resemble the red-headed spider ant, which also happens to be the species that houses them. After the stick insects hatch, they begin their ascent into the trees of host plants, and in most wild cases, that would be eucalyptus. These small nymphs go through five molts if they are males and six molts if they are female, with each one looking very much like a stick or dried leaf. Something really cool is that if a stick insect loses a leg while it's still a nymph, that leg will actually grow back in the next molt, just not as long as the original. That being said, if it's already an adult and loses a limb, then it's gone for good. In regards to their molting, these insects actually need to hang upside down on something for the best chance of having a clean molt, 
Their bodies are pretty big, with females reaching a length of 20 centimeters, and as a result, they rely on gravity to help them slip out. In the wild, these insects are preyed upon by birds, but they do a pretty good job at mimicking their surroundings. They even go as far as to sway their bodies like branches or leaves in a tree. One study actually looked at whether or not wind triggers stick insect body sway, and the answer is yes, it actually does. Now, aside from blending into their surroundings, these stick insects do have some other methods of warding off predators. Both male and female, if threatened, will strike a pose that mimics scorpions by curling their abdomen up and elevating it by standing only on their front four legs. Males can also flare out their wings, and both are able to release a defense odor, which to us kind of has a toffee smell, but to other animals is pretty gross, unless you don't like toffee. They also cross their hind legs in a defensive position to protect their backs. These insects are all bark and no bite though, which is another reason why they make great pets and educational tools for learning about insects. If you are interested in raising some of these yourself, it's really not at all that complicated. You simply need a large enclosure with adequate airflow and a heating source if you live in places where your house gets colder than 16 C or 60 degrees Fahrenheit during the year. When it comes to food, most people will take cuttings from raspberry, blackberry, rose, or even oak and place cuttings of those in a vase and simply put it in the middle of the enclosure. You need to be careful though. Just because these insects can eat a variety of plants does not mean the insects you receive will. Just like people, they have their individual preferences. So using what the parents were raised on is a good place to start, since that is what they are genetically predisposed to wanting. These insects have a lifespan of one year in the wild, but up to two in captivity. And they are also a gift that keeps on giving, because females can lay up to 1,000 eggs in their lifetime. And these do not need a male for fertilization. The Australian spiny stick insect is parthenogenic, which means that females can produce viable eggs that are exact clones of themselves. This is something I went into detail on in episode 26 with the web spinners, so I'm not going to say much more other than if you take good care of your sticks, then you'll never not have any. As always, thank you for listening, and thank you so much to the people who are rating the podcast. We're almost at 30 ratings on Spotify, and that's fantastic. I've been working behind the scenes to get bonus content as well as merch available for a Patreon page. That way you guys can get more if you want, and you can also rep the pod. I know I will. If you want to check out the socials, those are available in the episode notes as well as the show notes. And of course, if you would like to send a listener submission yourself, you can do that through Instagram or email, which is insectsfordummies at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening.